Okay, welcome back to quality management. This time, the process plan quality management tools. I'm picking up on page 277 of the PMBOK guide. So, plan quality management is where the team is going to identify how to acquire, acquire the quality requirements. I mentioned early on a requirements elicitation, just uh, quality elicitation, just like requirements. We're striving for customer acceptance. So, We've talked before in cost management and elsewhere about the Iron Triangle, which uh, has stakeholders at the center. And we've always had EV, PV, and AC, or scope, uh, schedule, and cost, right, that we've balanced and we've made trade-offs on. But now I want you to consider, and we've always had at the top of that quality kind of sitting there. And now we're tying that in that with stakeholders in the middle of this triangle, quality is at the top, and we're having to balance these trade-offs between scope, schedule, and cost based on our quality standards that meet, will meet customer acceptance. So to do that, this is a typical how, uh, right? Plan quality management results in a quality management plan. And this is uh, how we are going to process quality. So I would like to then uh, begin with the inputs and include the project charter. Remember, the project charter is always set are high level and they have measurable objectives, and they are going to be that are going to be later detailed in the project plan. Uh, but for now, at the charter, they're high level. We want to capture those, and then we're going to uh, our inputs are the project plan. We've already gathered requirements. Uh, we've already talked stakeholder engagement and developed a scope baseline. The quality is meant to ensure that we have met the requirements of the project, hence the scope baseline. And then, of course, project documents. When I say RTM, I mean the requirements traceability matrix okay, that we developed in scope management. Moving on then to tools of uh, plan quality management. Uh, tools begins on page 281. The expert judgment. Again, it's individuals or groups with specialized knowledge. So a question I would ask you is, what does expert judgment entail with respect to quality? And that is laid out in 8.1.2.1. If expert judgment is going to bring us quality assurance, quality control, quality measures, quality improvements, and quality systems. Data gathering, they list the three samples, three types, including uh, benchmarking and brainstorming and interviews. And I've talked many times. We do stakeholder interviews to collect much of this information. But we can also do um, some brainstorming and benchmarking, looking at comparable products that we are building uh, that are related to ours. Then we have data analysis as another tool. This uh, I'm going to talk about in the next slide, so I'll hold for that. Decision making using multi-criteria decision tools. We've talked about that before. Those are largely like a prioritization matrix. You list your requirements, you weight things, you add value to each, and you get a summary which helps you prioritize uh, them. Okay. Criteria are prioritized and weighted would be keys there, okay? Data representation includes uh, flow charts, um, sometimes called process maps. Uh, and these show activities, decision points, branches and loops, parallel paths. Uh, and we'll talk more about that in a minute. SIPOC is one example. We'll talk about that. There's a logical data model, matrix diagrams, and line mapping. All the pictures here in just a minute. And uh, then I can do test and inspection planning, because one of the tools in quality is inspection. It was also a tool in the process called validate scope. When I take something to my customer and I show them, inspection is a great tool. Well, here in quality, inspection will be a tool. So how am I going to do that? I'm going to build that into the how of my, my quality management plan. And of course, I'm going to need meetings to do all that. Now, I did say I would come back. Uh, so, in the plan quality management tools, right, there are uh, 
Uh, here's the platinum rule. The benefits must exceed costs. So the team has to analyze. I, I, I will add quality. Quality will save me money in the long run. But I can't over add quality. Okay? There's a balance. So the benefits must exceed the costs when I'm doing quality. So it's a financial analysis, really, for cost-benefit analysis to estimate the strengths and weaknesses of the other alternatives. Just remember that less we rework and higher productivity and lower costs and increased customer satisfaction and increased profitability are good things. And this is what the customer is after and we're after in our product. So a cost-benefit analysis for each quality activity is going to compare the cost of the quality step to the expected benefit. We already, already talked about the cost of quality, but again, listed on page 282, we had just discussed it on page 274, I think it was, of the PEMBOK guide. So, uh, it's cost of conformance, how much money am I going to spend to avoid failure, or cost of non-conformance, how much money am I going to spend due to the failures. In that section right there are probably eight possible test questions for the certification exam, keep that in mind. Um, benchmarking is um, another tool. Um, other tools, design of experiments, statistical sampling, and other quality tools. Okay. All right, and then my output now is of plan quality management is my ha, huh, get this quality management plan. All I did was twirl the, the words around. And this output, you can expect to become an input to the following processes, okay? This is going to tell me how I'm going to implement uh, items to achieve quality objectives, okay? And I'm going to focus on value, okay, and reduce costs, okay? Uh, I will have quality metrics included. So I have this plan plus how, what I'm going to measure, okay? And I'm going to have plan updates and document updates, possibly, okay? The key benefit is that it guides the team on how quality will be validated and managed throughout the project. Okay, here's a slide with some uh, key uh, notes about key met quality metrics. Remember, the metric is a standard, and the standard we talked about in the very first uh, slide, I think, that began the last lecture. The standard matters. And I listed some examples like ISO and CISG and uh, OSHA. Okay, so review that if you need to. The metric is a standard of measurement. Metric allows organizations to measure their performance and to compare it over time uh, or with other organizations. Uh, we often use a dashboard uh, to update our leadership and our teams, and that is a metric. A standard of measurement. I also wanted to show you now that we have an output of a quality management plan, what would one look like? Have you ever seen one? Well, I just put into slide format in the next two slides what I think is a sample project quality management plan. I'll have the name and introduction that will list out the quality standards that we've been talking about, the metrics that we just discussed. I will uh, list reporting problem reporting, corrective action process, and supplier quality control. You don't have to read these slides. I just wanted to give you a sample of the index that to me would make a good quality management plan. Okay, that's it for this. Let's take a break. Come right back.